Hey, did you know that there was a married gay couple on television in the 1970s and nobody seems to remember them? Which is a little weird. Hi, I'm Matt Baum. I make videos about queer milestones on TV, and recently I was doing some research into the fight over whether gay couples should be allowed to kiss on television, and I came across the show Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Have you ever heard of this? Probably not, because it's kind of forgotten. But as I dug into it, I found that there was this couple on the show, Howard and Ed, who were pretty groundbreaking. So I dug up some more episodes, which are a little hard to find, and I want to show you what makes them so amazing. So first, let me just explain what Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman is. It's an experimental show from Norman Lear, who wanted to do this hybrid soap opera sitcom, just like Tom Hooper wanted to make a hybrid human and cat. But instead of making skimble shanks, Norman Lear decided that he was going to combine sitcoms and soap operas. He'd already had a bunch of hits with All in the Family and The Jeffersons and Maud, and when he went to the networks and proposed this, nobody wanted it. So what he did instead was he went to individual stations around the country and was like, hey, I'm gonna make this show. I've already had all these other hits. You want it? And so he would make the show and then just send it to them, bypassing the networks altogether. The other weird thing about it is that it wasn't a weekly show, it was a nightly show. It was on five nights a week. They made 300 episodes in just two years. And the episodes themselves were basically your standard soap opera drama. Every now and then they do something kind of weird, like Martin Mull's character gets killed when he's impaled through the chest with an aluminum pink Christmas tree. But usually it was pretty standard, like will they, won't they, love triangle kind of soap opera stuff. It's also got this kind of slow menace, like those live action Mary Worth videos that went around a couple years ago. Right now, I could chew a steel bar spit nails, Mary. It's also very repetitive, but by design, because Norman Lear believed that on soap operas you have to say everything twice, which is why he named it Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. But if Sally Field has taught us anything, it's actually three times. I was terrible to you. I know that, I know that, I know that. Anyway, I'm just obsessed with the show's existence because it is so bizarre and not that bad as if you play it at double speed. So that brings me to Howard and Ed. These two guys were introduced a couple dozen episodes into the first season, and at first they're set up as brothers who just recently moved to town with their elderly mother. But every now and then, there's these little hints that there's something mysterious, more to them than meets the eye. But what could it be? There's a lot of lingering glances and worried looks like you have on a soap opera. Finally, all those hints and cliffhangers build up until it's revealed they're not brothers, they're gay. A lot of the characters are shocked and scandalized, but then the show starts spending more time with Howard and Ed. We see their lives, we see that they're in love, and we hear them talk about how they might actually get married. The 1970s was the beginning of some serious conversations about whether gay couples should be allowed to marry. And at the time, there were people like Fagel and Ben Miriam and some activists in Colorado who would go up to marriage counters, demand a marriage license, and get turned away and turn that into a big like photo op and press opportunity. There was also some counter protests, like one guy tried to marry his horse. Turned out, horse wasn't of age. So gay marriage was something abstract in the news, but this show actually brought it home with a personable gay couple that was impacted by the question of should gay couples be allowed to marry? And so it's when they talk about marriage that things get really interesting, because Howard is deeply closeted. Ed wants them both to come out and get married. And Howard's mother believes that Howard's straight and just needs to find the right woman and settle down. And this question of whether to stay closeted or to come out is a particularly interesting conundrum, particularly considering where things were legally at the time. So just for some context, this is the mid-70s. Homosexuality had just been delisted as a mental illness a few years earlier, and sodomy had been decriminalized, but it was still illegal in Ohio to express romantic interest in someone of the same gender. In other words, you could be arrested just for saying I love you to your boyfriend. And in fact, that wouldn't be overturned until 1999. In 1999, there was a case where a guy flirted with a jogger. The jogger went to the police. The police arrested the guy who flirted with him, and he was sent to jail for six months. So if I was in Howard or Ed's position, I honestly don't know what I would do. Like, today I take for granted that it's the right thing to do to come out. But they really faced serious danger. It's a complicated storyline for a gay couple, and we wouldn't see anything like this on television again for decades. So the tension builds with Howard and Ed. Are they going to come out? Are they gonna get married? And as I was watching these episodes, I was wondering, how did this happen? How did this show put these progressive gay characters on TV in the mid-70s? Well, there were a couple of factors, I think. One is that Norman Lear had already had a bunch of hits, so he could get away with things that other producers couldn't. 
and he'd actually managed to put queer content on a lot of his shows. I have multiple videos on my channel about Maud and about All in the Family. He also put one of TV's first transgender, if not the first transgender character, on The Jeffersons. And those are just the shows that we remember fondly from Norman Lear. He also had a couple of uh, flops from around that time, but he put queer characters on those too. There was Hot L Baltimore, which had what was probably TV's first gay couple. All That Glitters did a gender flip where women were in positions of power and men were subservient to them. All's Fair, which had a lesbian wife off screen. And there was another very weird experiment, The Baxters, not to be confused with a spin-off from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles featuring a giant talking fly. The Baxters was half sitcom, and then the second half of the episode, the studio audience would just talk about their feelings about what they just saw. They did an episode about a gay teacher at the same time that in real life, California was considering a law that would prevent gay people from working in schools. What sets these characters apart is that they're complex and sympathetic. It's not like the lesbian killer of the week or the sassy best friend hairdresser. And Norman Lear could get away with this because he had those early hits, and also because with shows like Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, he just bypassed the network and went directly to the station. I go direct to the source with fleet animas. Do it and you'll catch the fleet before they head back to sea. Tell them Betty sent you. Norman Lear said that he wanted to tackle homosexuality on his shows because he considered it a failure of the 1960s to have left it out of sitcoms. He even said, and I quote, there was nothing but white bread and contentment in the 1960s American situation comedy. What about that point of view by omission? In other words, what he's saying here is that even though there was a backlash to what he was putting on TV sometimes, nothing that he could do was as extreme as leaving queer characters off of TV altogether. So what winds up happening with Howard and Ed? Ed's miserable in the closet, Howard is terrified to come out, and they might have stayed that way if it wasn't for Howard's mother's meddling. She convinces the neighbor, Mary Hartman, to kiss Howard. Howard and prove to him that he's actually into women. Well, she does, and Howard's response is, nope, I'm definitely, definitely gay. It's a cute little moment that's almost exactly the same as the gag in the gay marriage episode of Roseanne, when Martin Mull kisses Roseanne trying to prove that he might not be gay, but then realizes, nope, this definitely proves that I am. I did a whole video about that episode. You can find a link to that in the description. And then because it's a soap opera, word gets back to Ed. He misunderstands what happens. He decides he's gonna leave Howard and packs his bags. Ed finds out that Howard is left and he sends his mother away and then he goes chasing after Howard, catches him at the last minute and said that he was wrong and he wants to come out and he wants to get married. So love wins off screen. We don't actually see the marriage, but love does win. And I think theirs is the interesting story at the heart of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. They face a genuinely fascinating dilemma to get married or not to get married, to come out or not to come out, especially when you face real threats. But they're trapped inside this sitcom soap opera experiment that's never as interesting as their story. It just kind of makes me sad that they've been forgotten by most of the world, because television wouldn't be ready to show characters like them for another 20 years. By the way, this video is a little changed from how I normally do them. Let me know what you think, how you liked it, if you'd like to see more like this. Big thanks to you for watching, thanks to everyone who hits the subscribe bell, and huge thanks to everyone who makes my videos possible over on Patreon. Now, if you'll excuse me, this horse isn't gonna marry itself. <laughs>